The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're learning about microphones and speakers. Electricity can be used to produce and interpret sound. But before we get into how, let's first talk about how sound works. If I pluck a string on my ukulele, it vibrates creating sound waves. The string, moving back and forth, moves the air particles around it. Those particles move the next particles, and so on. This continues carrying the sound waves through the air. Eventually, those colliding air particles reach your ears, causing your eardrum to vibrate, which vibrates some tiny bones. Your brain interprets those vibrations as signals, and you hear sound. If I tighten the string, it moves faster at a higher frequency, making a higher pitch sound. If I loosen the string, it moves slower at a lower frequency, making a lower pitched sound. The magnitude of those frequency waves, or how wide the string vibrates, corresponds with the amount of air pressure generated and determines how loud the sound is. To generate sound with electricity, we need to create a vibration where we can control the frequency and amplitude. Our eardrums are diaphragms that vibrate when interpreting sound. We can create sounds similarly by causing a diaphragm to vibrate, like these drum heads. We'll start by looking at dynamic speakers. Previously, we've learned about inductors and how a magnetic field is generated when current is passed through a coil. In a dynamic speaker, a permanent magnet and an electromagnet are made to work together to move a diaphragm. The magnet is positioned at one end of the coil. When current is passed through the coil in one direction, the poles attract the coil towards the permanent magnet. When current is passed through the coil in the other direction, its poles are reversed and it is repelled away from the permanent magnet. The diaphragm is attached to the electromagnet and therefore is moved in and out whenever the coil moves. We can control the volume by controlling the amount of current and therefore the intensity of the diaphragm movement. We can also control the pitch by controlling the frequency that the diaphragm moves back and forth. Let's take a closer look at a dynamic speaker. We'll start with the bass. This silver metal bit is the pole piece. It's flat on one end with a cylinder that goes up the center of the speaker. Around the pole piece is a wire coil wound around a former, which is this tube made of heat resistant material. The pole piece acts as the core of this electromagnet. Next is a toroidal permanent magnet here. It surrounds the middle portion of the pole piece with an air gap between them. The air gap allows for the coil and former to fit between the magnet and the pole piece so it can slide back and forth. On the other end, the voice coil is held in place by a spider, sometimes called the suspension. At this point is also connected to the cone section, which acts as the diaphragm. The outer edges of the spider and the diaphragm are attached to the metal basket holding them in place while still allowing linear movement. The two wires on the voice coil are attached to the diaphragm and then attached to two terminals on the side of the basket. When the coil is connected to an oscillating current, the coil generates a magnetic field that interacts with the permanent magnet. The coil on the former slides on the pole piece, pulling and pushing the diaphragm rapidly in and out moving the surrounding air, generating sound waves. The faster the diaphragm vibrates, the higher the pitch of the sound. The harder the diaphragm vibrates, the louder the sound will be. A single full range speaker can produce most of the audio frequencies heard by the human ear, from about 10 to 20 hertz up to around 20,000 hertz. However, for quality, sometimes multiple speakers are used, each specializing in a portion of the audio spectrum. Subwoofers or woofers named for the low barking of dogs, produce the lower bass frequencies. Woofers are often placed in strong, reinforced cabinets that can withstand the more intense movement caused by the high air pressure they produce. Mid-range speakers produce the middle and most significant range of frequencies. This range includes most audible sounds, like musical instruments and the human voice. Tweeters, named for the high-pitched tweeting of birds, are designed to produce high audio frequencies. You can often find them all combined in a single cabinet, with tweeters being the smallest, mid-range being mid-size, and woofers being the largest. Another type of speaker you might come across are piezos. 
Piezos are often called buzzers because they are much less dynamic than speakers and produce mostly high-pitched sounds. Rather than using magnets and a coil to create movement, the diaphragm is made of a piezoelectric material that expands or shrinks when a voltage is applied. The diaphragm is placed in a rigid frame. When an electric field is applied, the piezoelectric material shrinks or grows as charges are introduced or removed. The result is the diaphragm rapidly flexing in and out, creating high-frequency sound waves. Some piezos can generate a range of tones, while others will generate only a single tone. While some can be connected directly to a DC voltage because they contain their own drive circuitry, others require an external driver to make them work. Despite looking completely different, microphones are basically speakers working in reverse. In fact, in old intercoms, the same device was used as both a speaker and a microphone, but it could only act as one or the other at any given time, so people had to take turns talking and listening. We've seen how in dynamic speakers, a power supply energizes the coil, resulting in a vibration. Microphones use vibrations from incoming sound waves to generate a current. Let's see how that works in dynamic microphones. In this flashlight is a coil with a magnet that can slide back and forth through its center. As the magnet passes through the coil, it generates an electric current. Once the magnet has moved through the coil enough times, a charge builds up large enough to power the flashlight. In a dynamic microphone, Sound waves vibrate a diaphragm attached to a coil, moving the coil back and forth around a magnet. This generates an electric signal that can be recorded or amplified back into sound. With speakers, the large magnetic coil mechanism is better at creating sound than the delicate piezo diaphragm. However, with microphones, the piezoelectric membrane, being small and sensitive, is perfect for creating more sophisticated microphones. Electric condenser microphones use a piezoelectric diaphragm combined with a second capacitive plate to convert sound into an electric signal. Sound waves cause the diaphragm to vibrate in and out, changing the capacitance between the plates, which in turn results in a variable electric current. The electric current generated by either type of microphone can either be recorded as audio or turned around and amplified back through a speaker system. Dynamic microphones are more physically robust can handle high volumes better, and don't require external power, so they're good for uses like public events and rock concerts. Condenser mics are fragile and require an external voltage to work, but they are more sensitive while picking up less noise, and are smaller, so they are excellent for studio and video recording. Now that we've covered speakers and microphones, for the first time ever, I'm giving you homework. I want you to go and find out what phantom power is and why it's sometimes needed with microphones. Think you know? Post your answers on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!